Case number 1908817, State of Michigan versus Devin Robinson. Appearances, please. Good afternoon, Your Honor. May I please support Jimmy Powell Horowitz for the people. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Evan Callahan, P30564, on behalf of the defendant. Mr. Robinson, please stand and place your name on the record. Devin Robinson. Thank you. Are people ready to proceed with this witness? Yes, Your Honor. Please bring the jury up. I rise for you, please.
I wasn't drinking no liquor. Okay, so you've got a little bit of marijuana in your system at the time. Yeah. Did you impair smoking while you was up here? No. Okay. So everything smoked with me at all. So you was already high? Yes. And where'd you get high and fried to? That was before I came over there. Before you came over there. So you was already high. Were you real high or just a little high or what? Uh, just smoke one blunt. Okay, so you smoke the blunt. So you wasn't out of it like sleep or out your mind or passed out of your gun pad. Right. Nobody slipped you any kind of mickey or anything like that. Right. Okay, so nobody drugs you or anything as far as you know. Right. Nobody put anything to your juice that you had, right? Right. Okay, so Okay. You know, I was about to say, I ain't opening it right off. Okay. But you upstairs, you're on the bed. Are you laying on the bed? Mm -hmm. Sitting on the bed. Sitting on the bed. And the is down on the knees. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, during this act, how long did it last? About 20 minutes. About 20 minutes. Okay, so you can have the for about 20 minutes. And then afterwards, what happened? She went downstairs. Okay, nobody else came into the room during that time? No. Okay. So you go downstairs. Now, did you have an opportunity to leave some DNA on pairs or in pairs or anything like that? Uh, yes. Okay, so you came in the mouth or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Did, did you guys have any other kind of sex? No. Okay, so the only DNA you may have left in his mouth or any other bed or anything like that? I, I would not. Okay, okay. So then from that point, you said you guys go downstairs. Right. And when you go downstairs, what happens? Everybody was talking. Yeah. Everybody was talking. Yeah. So the same other three that got out of that car, they still downstairs. Right. Okay. What well, about the other two that you saw when you first came in the house came downstairs? They still there too. Okay. So we got at least five people downstairs. And little pairs come downstairs, correct? Right. Okay. When you come down there, everybody's talking to you. We walk outside, we talking. Everybody come out there about the room. Okay. So I went, I went home, I went to the gas station, grabbed me some cigarettes and another juice. Took it in. Okay. To the end, you did what? That's it. You went home. I don't know. That was it. That was it. For the whole night. For the whole night. Okay. Did Pierce charge you any money? No. Okay, so this is just like, this is a favor because you thought you was going to be. Right. Okay. So nobody else had sex with nobody else? No. Nobody else went down on you? No. As far as you remember, right? Right. And what if we told you we have witness testimony of somebody else that was there who actually said they went down on you and a couple other people? You don't remember? Right. No. You don't? Could it, could it have happened? I mean, could it have happened? No. Yeah, no. Okay, because you were, the lights were on enough so you could see everybody? No. So the lights were on? Yeah. So in between your parents for about 20 minutes, parents could have came up off to you and somebody else could have been over you and you wouldn't have known unless somebody was said something, right? I don't know. Okay, so you don't really know. I mean, you <coughs> positively say that the whole time that you were practicing or getting fellatio done or you performed on you, that it was only parents that were doing it. Can you say that one more time? Okay, you positively said that while Paris was performing this fellatio on you, for 20 minutes you said, it was only him. Yeah. Okay, I mean, you know it was only him. You had your eyes open, you know, your senses all about you, nobody else jumped in during that time. If somebody said they did, they'd be lying. What you say? Right. You're pretty sure about that. Right. Because there's some point in time your eyes were closed and you couldn't see in that room where somebody could have did that, you wouldn't have known if they did it. <laughs> what you trying to say? It was somebody else? Well, somebody said that they actually went down after Paris went down. Three, Three different people. Dang. Now, you don't remember that. You're telling mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You're telling us the truth about that, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> So you say after all this happened, you leave, everybody's starting to leave, right? right? You leave, you go home, and when you go home, what do you do? Take a shower and go to sleep. Take a shower and go to sleep. And you're at home that whole time, right? Yes. Until what time? Until like 11 o'clock. A.M. A.M. Next morning. Mm -hmm. Well, same morning. Daylight. Daylight. So about 11 o'clock. At 11 o'clock, what do you do? Mm -hmm. I go down to my house and I'm this little, little place on the way. What's that kind of place? What is it? No, I'm talking about it's in, where you stay at. Who? My pops. Your pops? Yeah. Okay. So when you went home, you stayed with your mom? Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you went home, was your mom home? Yes. So 
So when you came in, your mom let you come in? Yes. Okay, she saw you come in? Yes. She observed you come in, right? Yes. You came in by yourself? Yes. My right? mom came and was going in on the couch. Now she was going on the couch? Yes. And nobody saw you leave, what'd you say? You just went to sleep, right? Yes. So you didn't leave at all? I did. Yeah. Okay. So, you got a twin brother? No. <laughs> I'm being serious. This is real important. You have a twin brother? Uh-uh. You have a twin brother? I got a brother that looks just like me. Though. You look just like him? The same kind of hair? It, I don't know. I don't know if he got it or not. He's doing time. All right. He's not an alpha. He's in jail, right? Yeah. And the clothes that you had on that night, what clothes did you have on that night when you walked into the house? Uh-huh. My arm is fatigue jacket. Fatigue jacket. With? And my arm... Um, my Adidas hat. You see, you never left back out. When I walked in to my house. You never left back out until like 11 o'clock. Never back, you never left, left, left back out shortly after you went in the house and left right back out. You never left back out like that. Yeah. That's what you're saying, right? I never left back out. Okay. As I went home after leaving that shot. You ever have a history of memory lapse? I don't know. <laughs> have you ever had a well, problem? Hold on, what is a memory lapse? Have you ever had a problem where you can't remember certain things? Sometimes. Sometimes. When did, that, when did that come on? A lot when I smoked weed. When you smoked weed? Yeah. Okay. And so you can't remember certain things that you did the night before or during that time or something like that? Like, it'd it be stuff that I forget and like being in there that I just said, like, damn, I'm just thinking about that. But you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't forget shooting three people, would you? Talk about not. You wouldn't forget that, right? Yeah, no. So then, then you must not be telling us the truth. Because we have video. Of you going in the house and coming right back out shortly afterwards and going back to that house. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have video for that. Now, can you give an explanation why you don't remember that? Because you just told me you left out at 11 o'clock, but that's not true. Why? We have actual video. So, either you forgot or you're lying to me. Which one is it? Nah, I didn't forget. I think I'm sorry. I'll tell you because I did. Well, you did. Because we have your video coming out. Mm -hmm. Going back to the house. So, I didn't. How <laughs> you going to make me admit to something that I no, actually did? No, that's no, what you just said. No, man, but you got... I told you we were going to keep one of them. Listen, listen, though. Because you don't want, because you don't want to... Uh, where you, your auntie and mom was at the house when you got there. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to get mom and auntie involved in this. In a negative way. Because we have video. That's a lot. No bullshit. Mind you, we were already investigating. And then we have video from other sources. You run out of the house if you had sex with there, so sexual acts were performed on you. That video you ran out of the street, cut up the side street to your mom's house. Mind you, there's cameras everywhere. We, are, we had cameras everywhere. Right. It's tracked. Tracks you. Right. Boom, boom, boom. We can piece all that together. Right. No bullshit. I'm listening to you. I need you to hear me. If you're I'm listening, not no, right. That's all <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just memory loss or whatever the case may be. I'm telling you what we have. We have, we tracked you on video. And I just tracked you from a dog. Mm -hmm. Which we can do that, we did that as well. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. In the house. Running. That's a fact. Which is not going to hit fancy butts or maybe's. That's a fact. I'm going to sit back and let y'all finish talking. Just want you to know that. So I feel you trust me. So I want you to know that that's no bullshit. We have that. I'm going to let my partner. Get back into the conversation where he had to ask you, okay? And then now all he said is, look, you know, it's normal for people to come in here and deny things. That's normal. That's what happens. Right. Okay. And what's, what's going on right now is it's serious. It's very serious. You know, but you have to show some remorse. And I, I, you're not a killer. I can look at you and say, you're just not some cold blood killer. Somebody would have to do something to you. Nobody. Uh, you shot somebody and they died. You shot somebody and they died. You described how you shot somebody four times, but it was running down the stairs. You, you listened to everything. We just, 
we let you stay out here in the streets for a reason so we can hear you talking about these things because you had to get them off the chest. So in order for you to come in here and say, look here, I don't remember you telling me that right now, when I actually heard your voice say these different things about certain things, that's how I know you lie. And it's disrespectful to me, it's disrespectful to him, because we here trying to be cool and straight up with you. We're right. trying, to, trying to give you the straight up facts about what we know. But I can't even know. Y'all telling me what y'all know, but I know for sure that I didn't do anything. Well, well why would you I go didn't. out and tell somebody that you did? Why would you go tell somebody that you did? Let me tell you something. Quit laughing. That ain't funny. Three people died. Three people died. That's not funny. What's funny is you said they're trying to accuse somebody of something I didn't really do. That's what's funny. That's, okay. that's, that's the only reason I'm Well, then I'm why are you laughing. telling people that you were the one that went in there shot? How would you have all this knowledge if you didn't do all of this? So either either you protecting somebody else or you protecting yourself. Which one is it? I never told nobody I was nowhere near it because not I didn't. True. We heard it. Not true. And another part that's not true, when you said you didn't leave the house until like 11 a.m. Not true. You saw me. Okay. You saw me. So what I'm trying to tell you is it's not good to lie about it. You, show, you demonstrate a consciousness of guilt, which is not good. And you should be showing some remorse, because I don't take you for a killer. You're not a killer, you're not a cold-blooded killer, or are you? You know, you need to, you need to educate us on this. I don't believe you are. And I believe something happened where you had to go back in there and you should have shot these guys for something. You know, maybe it was a robbery, maybe it was this. I don't know why you did it. That's what we asked you, why did you do it? We know what you did. We want an explanation for you why you did what you did. We were hoping there's a good enough explanation for we can go and advocate for you. But we want an explanation from you why you did what you did. Because we know exactly what you did. You understand that, young man? We know exactly I'm what you did. I'm telling you, and I'm listening to you. Yeah. But I ain't did nothing. That ain't true. Because I think, what I think is that, uh, just like the, uh, I'm talking to my partner now, and you can listen, I think it's more so of, uh, like, he's ashamed. So I'm not disrespecting by talking about him. Just, just the fact that he's ashamed to talk to his parents about his lifestyle, I think he's kind of ashamed, scared, and embarrassed to talk about the actions that he did. I think that, you know, I believe he respects us and he don't want to disappoint us. However, I think that you know I'm talking to you, you gotta let we mean. We got we got two weekly. We got you in the house. Performing sex or having sex. Thanks. We got you in out, as you said. <coughs> we were there longer than you told us. Um, yes, we got you. People leaving. We know people were leaving. And you left. You know that. We also got you coming back and running away from the location. Up the street, up the side street. I can't think of this, the name of the streets right now, but to your mom's house. I mean, clear as day. You can't deny technology. You can't. Damn sure so can't, but I mean, I know what I did and they did, but... Okay, that's, okay, that's okay, plan. okay. Well, listen, 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 though. I'm sorry to shut you off. If you didn't, you were there, or you saw something that made you run away. Right? So if you didn't do it... How can I run away from something when I was at home? Well, maybe you, you went in, I mean, you went back. Maybe you went in and you saw some shit. You saw them shot and you ran out. I don't know. And that's where you come in. You got to tell us that. When I went home, I went home. Like, literally home. Which way did you go home? I went to the gas station first. Mm -hmm. Before I went home. You got another juice. Another juice and some cigarettes. Okay. The first juice you drunk over there, right? At, on, uh, you know what? I don't even think I drunk the juice. You, you left it over there, right? Right. Outside, inside. Inside. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, it's kind of hard for you to say he was at home. That's not a fair 
answer because you don't know when you saw the person. You you run it. You don't know when. I didn't give you a time. Right. And you're going to say you was at home, but I never gave you a time when you was running home. Right. Like, like I said, when I left there, I went home. And that's it. About what, 5.30 in the morning? No. What time? Like 3.50 in the morning. Okay. Okay. Think that's it was like 3 o'clock when I got over there. So that gives you 50 minutes, not the original 20 minutes you said. Detective Hauser. Towards the end of that video, the defendant says to you, I know what I didn't do and what I did do. Do you recall that? Yes. And when you started the interrogation, you were asking him about Paris, and the defendant acknowledged that he knew he was on the news. Correct. And the defendant um, acknowledged that, that Paris was on the news also, that he was on this video with Paris, interacting with a transgender woman. Correct. But that he knew that she was a boy. That's what he said. And your partner started indicating, we got your DNA, we got your DNA, and you guys were just talking about Paris. And the defendant then acknowledges oral sex with Paris. Is that correct? Correct. At any time, does the defendant acknowledge having contact, physical contact with Timothy Granger? No, I don't recall that, no. Or Alante Davis? No. Or anyone else in that house? No. And the defendant told you that when he went home that night, his mom was home and his auntie were both home when he got home. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. And the first time that you mentioned you've got videos of him running out of the house, that's your partner, Ira Todd, that mentions that? Yes. And the defendant's initial response is a pause and a, mm-hmm. Correct. And then you guys keep asking him and he denies it? Yes. And then you chime in and you start asking him about the videos and he stops and he asks for some water. Is that correct? Correct. Does that indicate to you that he, after, after you're asking about the videos, whether or not he has a memory lapse when he smokes weed? Yes. He says he does get memory lapses? Yes. He did. And this is after the questioning about how many people you receive oral sex from and being asked about shootings? Yes. Which he denied repeatedly. Yes. And again, the defendant said that he clearly can remember what he didn't do and what he did. Correct. But only acknowledges to having contact with Paris. Correct. Thank you. No, Cross examination. Sorry. You're professional and you do things in a professional way, right? Absolutely. You lie to defendants, do you not? It's a normal job. That's not the question, sir. I ask if you lie to defendants. To defendants? Yeah. Do I when, lie you, when, you, when you interrogate somebody, you lie, correct? At times, I believe, yes. Yeah, you lied during this presentation, correct? Correct. You lied multiple times to him during this presentation, correct? I did. I did. And he never admitted shooting anybody, did he? No, sir. You approach him like you're going to be his advocate and go to the prosecutor's office and do him a big favor. Do I have that right? Yes, sir. Your intention isn't to go to the prosecutor and be his advocate, is it? Well, the evidence will be given to the prosecutor. You're not yes. acting as his advocate when you go to the prosecutor's I'm office, judging. are you? Are you not a I'm judging legitimate cross-examination. Well, you've already asked the question. You already responded. <clears throat> During the course of this interrogation, you and your partner are careful, are you not, 
not to mention to him the specific facts that uh, somebody marched in that house and killed somebody in a particular room or at a particular time, correct? So yes and no. At some points I I was giving him information without him knowing during my interview. Yeah, you're trying to get him to go along with what you're saying, right? No, I'm just giving him information. I'm trying to extract information from him. You, you, you mean to tell me you're not trying to get him to go along with what you're saying? I'm trying to get him to tell the truth, sir. What you believe to be the truth, correct? Objection. I have nothing to do, Judge. Sustained, thank you. Thank you. Redirect? Yeah, so you do lie to defendants with your interrogations, is that correct? I do. Why? Just to extract information from them. Do you expect the defendants to be honest with you all the time? They're not honest all the time. And why would you say that? 27 years I've been doing this, I, it's just a fact. I mean, they're not honest all the time. Is, is they minimize case? their roles sometimes. Okay. Now, you told several lies to the defendant in this case. I did. And one of those involved uh, a wiretap that you were watching the complainants in this case. Correct. Were you guys ever watching the complainants? Not at all. Were you investigating the complainants no. for doing something wrong? No. Why did you guys tell the defendant that? Just minimizing his role, so trying to extract information from him. When you say minimizing his role, when you first started interrogating him, you were coming at him from a standpoint of he might have been the victim in this situation? Correct. Did you know at this point, this is June 5th when you're interviewing the defendant, at this point, do you do you have any information about why this happened? No. All right, you are just going on based on what you have on June 5th. Correct. Had you been out to the defendant's house um, prior to, to June 5th, prior to when he was apprehended? I believe I was. I had it, yes. Was that on May 29th? No, objective. I'll the scope of cross. As to whether or not why he interrogated this defendant the way that he interrogated him. As to whether or not he had any issues. Or is going to sustain it does exceed the scope of cross-examination. Yes. Thank you. You told some other lies to the defendant, is that correct? Yes. Okay. You also uh, told him that we had his DNA already. Is that correct? Correct. And in fact, do we have DNA as of June 5th? No. And why not? Because it has to be sent out to the lab and returned to us. And when you told the defendant that we had his DNA, when you were talking to him about Paris, did he uh, suddenly tell you that he was, yes, did have oral sex with Paris that night? He did. And had he talked about that prior to you telling, telling him that you had his DNA? No. So sometimes these investigatory tactics work? Yes, absolutely. Uh, when you confronted the defendant about having a video of him coming out of the house, was this news to the defendant? No, Jack, again, exceeding the scope of the cross. This is asking about his interrogation tactics and how the defendant Well, responded. I think it calls for speculation on the part of the witness with regard to... I can lay a foundation. Okay, well, in terms of his objection exceeding the scope of cross-examination, the court will overrule, and then you need to lay a foundation. Thank you, Judge. The videotape involving the person running out of Devonshire at 4.57 a.m. Had that ever been released to the public? No. Had that ever left Detroit headquarters as of June 5th? No. So the defendant would have no way of having access to this information? Correct. And the first time that he was confronted with it, he paused and went, mm-hmm? In our interview, yes. And then denied it. Is that correct? Correct. In subsequent follow-up? Yes. Thank you. Nothing further. Nothing Do you have further. any additional questions? No. Detective Howells, are you thanked and excused? Now, prosecutor, do you have any additional witnesses at this time? Your Honor, we're going to start with Detective Bowman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. your first and last name for the record? P-A-Y-C-R-A-L-I-L-L-I-A-M-S. Thank you. Raise your hand for me, please. You solemnly swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so if you got it. I did. Thank you. May we see. Whenever you're ready. Thank you. Good morning. Or good afternoon. Good afternoon. Could you please state your name for the record? Paige Williams. How are you employed? Detroit Police. Where are you currently assigned? Detroit Police Homicide Task Force. How long have you been with Homicide Task Force? Uh, three years. What is Homicide Task Force? Homicide Task Force is a multi-jurisdictional 
agency. It's Detroit Police, Michigan State Police, FBI, DEA, and Wayne State Officer. Are you the officer in charge of the case involving Devin Robinson? I am. Did you see Mr. Robinson in the courtroom today? I do. For the record, would you please indicate where he is seated and what he is wearing? In front of defense counsel in a black suit. Let the record reflect that the police identify the defendant in this case. The record will reflect. So I'm going to take you back to May 25th of 2019 to 3474 Devonshire. Did you make that location on that date? I did. Was that a Saturday? Yes. And as part of your investigation, did you come into contact with surviving witnesses, uh, Clifton Blair Keys and Armand Matthews? I did. And what about Brendan Settles and Lance Atterbury? I did. Were Brendan and Lance on scene at 3474 Devonshire when Detroit Homicide showed up? Yes. Were all of those individuals cooperative? Yes. Did all of them give you bubble swaps? They did. Did you have to get search warrants or did they do so voluntarily? They volunteered. Did you at some point go to the BP gas station at the corner of Buckingham and Mac? Yes. Was there video extracted from that location? There was. Why? Um, because there is a, uh, that address is a green light location. And after talking with the witnesses, they advised us that they had met and encountered a person at the gas station prior to the shooting happening. So we went back to that location to see if we could see footage of that. Okay, so initially, uh, you're looking for a suspect, is that correct? Uh, and this type of person of interest. Okay. Now, is there a video that was extracted from across the street from the 3474 Devonshire location? Yes. And was that of interest to you? Yes. Why? Um, because the video showed that um, at 457 that there was a suspect running out of that location that went south on Devonshire and then went east on Brunswick. East on Brunswick, would that bring you in the direction of Buckton? Yes. All right. When you reviewed the green light video, did that help you to determine um, that you needed to interview somebody else in this case? Yes. H tell me how you went about that. So once the green light video was extracted, we um, sent it to facial recognition, and then we released a clip from inside of the video. We released it on the news. And later on that evening, we had Crime Stopper tips and facial recognition coming back with the name of the person who was inside the gas station. Did that happen on Saturday, May 25th? Yes. So the same day as the shooting, just into the day? Yes. Did you, the person that you now had as a person of interest that you wanted to interview, did you have um, a location or a place that he was living? Yes. What was that? Uh, 3440 Buckingham. Did you do a canvas of that area? Yes. Where is Buckingham in relation uh, to the BP gas station? Uh, the next block. It's on the corner. The BP gas station is in between Haverhill and Buckingham. We're going to look at a map. This is admitted number two. And if I could give you the pointer, which is up on the judge's bench. Showing you exhibit number two. If you could please show me where, first of all, the BP location is located at Mac and Buckingham. Excuse me. The BP is located right here. This is Mac Avenue. This is Buckingham. And what side of the street on Buckingham is defendant's home located on? On the east side of Buckingham. And the how and the street behind Mac? Brunswick. Is that a residential street? Yes. Are there any green light videos on that street? No. Is it dark? Yes. Is there, uh, does Brunswick also run into <coughs> Devonshire? It does, right here. And where is 3474 Devonshire located on that street? Uh, probably right about here. So we're dealing with two square blocks? Yes, ma'am. The street Haver Hill, where is that lo located? In the middle. Now, after getting the green light video in this case and identifying a person of interest, that you need to speak with, and locating his address at 3440 Buckingham, do you canvas this area? Yes. Tell me about that. We canvas the area, um, in, in all cases, we canvas the area for any potential additional witnesses or video that we might find in the locations. Um, once we got the name of the defendant and his address was 3440 Buckingham, we went on that street to look for a surveillance video. 
So all around in this two block area, we check for surveillance video. And did you locate any video across the street from where defendant was? Or where yes. defendant lived? Yes. And was that extracted in this case? It was. And was that placed on evidence? It was. And is that part of people's exhibit number one involving the green light video? It is. And there, is there also video from across the street from 347 Park, Devonshire, that is part of that exhibit? Yes. Mr. Callanan, this is admitted exhibit number one. Do you have any objections? All right, we're going to play at this time the full video. And you have the pointer detect, is that correct? I do. Right, I'm going to ask that you, we're going to start and we're going to pause it as we start. All right, the time on this is? 2 30 And it's May 25th, 2019. It is. And which, which camera is this? This is the camera that is across the street from the defendant's house. Um, also, this particular location has two different camera views, just for the record. Did you take video from both? Yes. All right, where is the BP gas station in relation um, to these cameras? So this street right here is MAC. The BP gas station is right here on the corner. And this has a view of defendant's home, which is across the street. Not yet, not in this camera <coughs> angle. This is before we get to defendant's home. Correct. <coughs> Please continue. 2.32 a.m., the video starts. <coughs> Entering the camera right now is a cab. This is the next camera angle at 232.22? Yes. Sorry. There's a figure that emerged from the cab? Yes. Is that figure wearing like colored clothing? And yes. And is getting ready to uh, step right here on the sidewalk. I'm going to hand you <coughs> admitted 19 at this time. You indicated that there was a cab in this case. Yes. Did you have phone records from a phone that you believe the defendant was using at the time? Yes. And there was a phone workup done for that? Yes. That has been admitted into evidence as number 19? Yes. Is, are there calls to a phone or to a cab company on there? Yes. What time? Uh, starting at... Midnight. Are there others? Uh, there's one, two, three, four. Um, the first one is at 12.56 a.m. The next one is at 1.12 a.m. The next one is at 1.31 a.m. And the uh, fourth one is at 1.31 a.m. Uh, I did misspeak. There is a fifth call at 2.15 a.m. Now we're at 2.32 a.m. for the video, and there's a person in light clothing walking in the direction of what area? Um, well, um, once the video starts playing, um, the defendant's home. Objection. Go ahead and play the video, please. Wait a second. What is, there's an objection on the floor. Just one moment. What's the objection? You want to approach? Yes. Please.
This time is going to overrule the defendants or defense counsel's objection. Please ask the question again. Thank you, ma'am. You testified that uh, there was a person in light color, colored clothing walking in a certain direction, and we're going to continue to play. And if you would please indicate what direction the person in light colored clothing, what direction they are going in. Yes, ma'am. Can you use your pointer, please? They're walking in a direction of a home located right here. Okay, I'm going to ask you to pause it again. You personally canvassed this area? I did. You know where these cameras are located? I do. You know where 3440 Buckingham is located? I do. The person in the light colored clothing, where are they walking to? 3440 Buckingham. Is that a home that is associated with the defendant in this case? It is. I'm going to ask that you continue to play it. Just for the record, Your Honor, this video is going to be about half an hour. Thank you. You now see a figure walking on the sidewalk. Can we pause it, please? All right, we're at 2.38 a.m. Um, Correct. This figure that we see, is this figure also wearing light color, color clothing? Yes. And could you tell the area from which it, it emerged? From 3440 Buckingham. Thank you. Keep going. We are now in camera two. We see a person in light colored clothing? Yes, the Maybe. figure is still here, walking northbound towards Mac. The figure has now made a left turn. The time is 2.39. And now we are at 2.38.03. Do we see yes. a person in light colored clothing? Yes, this is the green light video at the BP gas station. This person has already been identified by a witness in this case? Who yes. Is there? Yes. And this person was identified by Blair as the defendant in this case? Yes. Now what are we seeing? The defendant has entered the location. You can see the person in the light colored clothing uh, has entered the store. Is that correct? This person that was identified by Blair is the defendant in this case? Yes. <laughs> and you can hear interaction between the clerk and that person. Have you heard the defendant's voice in this case? Yes. How many times? Hundreds. Do you recognize the voice? I do. The person interacting with the clerk, who is that? The defendant. You recognize that voice? I do. Please continue. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
What is the timestamp now? 239. Is this a different camera angle? Yes, this is camera 12 outside of the BP gas station. Shaka Williams, we'll pause it for just a minute. Um, the lower part of the screen, what direction is that? Which part? So when we see the defendant walking towards the screen and walking out of frame, which direction is that? What street? What street is on that corner? Buckingham. What's the street that we can see? Mac Avenue and behind here, 
This would be Haverhill. And then down at the bottom of the screen is off off camera's off Buckingham. Camera. Off camera's Buckingham. Yes. Thank you. And what is the time right now? Two forty three AM. Is it time now? 2.44 a.m. Pause it, please. <coughs> this is another camera angle? Yes, this is the camera, uh, the camera that's back on Buckingham, camera two. And what time is it showing now? 2.43 and 53 seconds in the, the last, morning. Last clip ended at 2.44 a.m.? Correct. The defendant was already out of the frame? Yes. And again, where is the PD pass station, please? Right here where this light would be coming from. Okay. Do you see a figure moving? I do. Where? Right here. Where's the gas station again? Right here. Thank you. Could you please take your place? Has that person paused? Uh, they are moving, going southbound. Could you please follow the question? Does that person appear to be wearing light or dark clothing? It appears to be light. Thank you. Does the person reverse course? Correct now. Northbound. Now continuing northbound. Uh, stop. Southbound now? Correct. So that's from camera angle two forty four AM? Yes, camera one. Can you see a figure please let me know? Right now. Is that person wearing light or dark clothing? Appears to be light clothing. Could you please follow me through the country? Second direction has now changed where we're going back northbound. Stopped. Continuing northbound. Stopped. Now, southbound. Can we pause it? Um, did the person in light colored clothing pass 
Food Group Reserve Buckingham? Yes. Go ahead, please. What is the next street from Mac? Brunswick. Are we back at the gas station? We are. 2.51 a.m.? Yes. What is this for you, please? Um, is this camera 10? That's Hammer Hill Street, right here. Do we see someone in light colored clothing? We do, right here. Coming from what direction? Coming from Hammer Hill, walking westbound. That's 2.51 a.m.? Yes. Walking back to the Tavern Hill? Yes. What direction now? Do you see an individual? Well, I'm walking south on Haver Hill. Yes, it's now 4 a.m., camera 12. So we're, we're over an hour past the last camera. Can we pause this for a moment? I'm sorry, so it's 4 a.m., is that correct? Yes. And why did you pull the video from 4 a.m.? Um, just to make sure that we try to capture everything that could have happened within this investigation. We normally pull videos maybe like a six or possibly a 12 hour block at a time. At the time when a, when a homicide happens, we're not exactly sure what we are or are not looking for. So sometimes you wanna see what might have happened earlier in the day or later that evening. So you'll take a large block and then as you gather the information, um, you'll find the exact time that you're looking for within your larger block, also so that it doesn't get overweight. So Devonshire, can you see Devonshire in the shot? Um, not really. Um, this street right here is Haver Hill. And what direction is, Dev is Devonshire from Haver Hill? One block over. Thank you. Please continue. Thank you. Four a.m. We're playing from 4 a.m.
four oh one AM. Okay. Where's Buckingham? Buckingham is out of the camera view here. <coughs> We're now at camera two, the vehicle across the street from three four four zero Devonshire. This is Mac Avenue, this is Buckingham, four oh two AM. Let me see a figure, please clean it up. Right now. Is that person wearing light colored clothing or dark colored clothing? Light. Different camera angle? Yes, camera one. Here's the light color clothing. 4 or 3 a.m. again? Yes. <coughs> the person in the light color clothing is where? What, went in what direction? Went into the direction of 3440 Buckingham. <coughs> camera now moves to 4.53 a.m., is that correct? Yes. And there are phone records in this case, is that correct? Yes. And they were taken <coughs> from phone that you believe the defendant had custody of? Yes. Was there a call at 4.50 a.m.? Yes. Who was that call to? Mallory Robinson. Do you need this? No. Who is Mallory Robinson? The defendant's mother. And there was zero time, there's one second? Correct. So now, three minutes later, 4.53 a.m., we have camera footage, is that correct? Yes. And if you could, uh, when you see a figure, please indicate for, for the record. We'll okay. emerging from what direction? Coming from here onto the sidewalk, heading south on Barnesfoot. 340 Buckingham is the address associated with the defendant in this case? Yes. And the defendant is going which direction on Buckingham? South. Towards what? Brunswick. Brunswick is the next street? Yes. Thank you. which has to be adjusted for 42 seconds. When you see a figure, please, please let me know when you see a signal. Okay. Now, figure is running down the sidewalk, crossing the street, and has made a left turn on Brunswick. Pause it, please. The direction that you see this figure running is that the direction of Buckingham? It is. Please continue. We're at another camera. Camera one. 501. Correct. Pause it. Is this the camera that's across the street from 3440 Buckingham? Yes. Please continue. Going into the five oh one, we have a dark figure three four four zero button. Correct. That figure emerged from what direction? 
emerged. What street is <coughs> what street is the next street that is south of south of what location? Yes. So coming from Brunswick, the figure was traveling north on Buckingham. And at four fifty eight we saw an individual traveling towards Buckingham on Broadway. <coughs> Correct. And then 501, we see a figure emerging from Brunswick going towards 3440 Buckingham. Correct. Devonshire and Buckingham are only two blocks apart? Yes. <coughs> Did you have any information during your investigation in this case that anyone else, that anyone living in that house left that location that night at 453? No. Do you know who lived at Buckingham? I do. Who? Uh, the defendant, the defendant's mother. Um, a woman by the name of Sabrina Bates, a woman by the name of Jerkita Woods, and two minor children. Any other men? Um, Miss Bates may have had her boyfriend listed. I, I can't recall that. Exactly. <coughs> Can you describe the defendant's mother? Um, a black female, maybe 220 pounds. Uh, when I saw her this morning, she had she had on a hat. I don't know. Yesterday, she had two French braids, um, lighter complected than me. Does she have your set? Yes. What about Jaquita Woods? Heavy set. What about Sabrina Bates? A little bit heavier than me. Now, this video, the video of the green light video in the BB gas station, you said that was released to the media um, the day of May 25th. Yes. Because you were looking for the defendant in this case. Correct. Let's talk about Sabrina Bates. Sabrina Bates was first interviewed, you know when? Um, well, let's start. May 25th was a Saturday, is that correct? It is. Okay, this was. is the March, I suppose it would have been the 15th. Yeah. This is the calendar? Okay. And the 25th is a Saturday, is that correct? Yes. And was it a few days before you came into contact with Sabrina Bates? A few days after the homicide? Yes. Yes. Do you know when that was? Um, if I could see a copy of her statement, I would have the exact date. If that will refresh your recollection? It would. Your Honor, I'd like to move the admission of number 20. Number 20 or number 15? 15, Any objection? Her statement? No. Number 15 is the May 2019 calendar. Oh, no objection. Okay. Admit it. May I publish? You may. Do you know what date you first came into contact with Ms. Bates? That would have been 528. And what date was the 28th? Tuesday. And you, had you had any kind, or how did you develop um, a name and a location for the defendant in this case? So, once the victim um, was identified and we had his address as being 3440 Buckingham, and we then did um, a canvas of the area. Going to the locations, um, finding video along Buckingham, um, there came a point in time when uh, part of my team was out canvassing and they came into contact with Sabrina Bates. And were you at this point looking for the defendant at 3440 Buckingham? Yes. And were you able to locate him at that location? No. Were you trying to find him? Yes. How many people were trying to find? Um, probably 20 to 25. Mm -hmm. Showing you proposed 16. <coughs> Do you recognize the six of it? Yes. Can we see the initial 16? Counsel? What is the objection? No objection. 16 is admitted. May I publish? You may. And for the jury, what is 16? The 3440 Buckingham? Correct. The home that is associated with the defendant? Yes. 
So at this point, on the 28th, when you encounter Ms. Bates, you are trying to find the defendant. Correct. Are you able to find the defendant? No. Are you trying to determine where the defendant might be? Yes. Does Sabrina Bates give you information? Um, to one of my members, yes. Is that information of significance to you? Yes. Why? Um, because it gave us information as to um, what she observed and knows what happened at the residence that evening. Did it give you a, a timeline for when the defendant was last at 3440 Buckingham? Yes. And did that timeline concern you? It did. Why? Um, because um, once, once Ms. Bates woke up, the defendant was no longer at the location. You were specifically sorry, asking about... Please don't hear from me. Not offer for the truth of the matter at this point, just to show why this witness did what she did in her investigation. Trying to say it's not offer for the truth. Well, it very <coughs> moves me from the Chicago Post, but I don't know this. Why don't we have the jury go inside the jury? All right, so the jury.